Hey everyone, I've had this asked several times regarding enhanced input triggers and how to use them, so for this video I'll briefly go over each one. So first I'll set up my example of a jump that requires shift key to trigger. So we're going to go ahead and create an input action for jump. And another one. I'll just call it jump chord. So both of those we have to add to the input mapping context. So jump I'll make space. And for the chord I will make it shift. So uh, in, the, in the jump action here do corded action, and then open this up. And the corded action is jump cord. Then all I, you have to do is put the jump event, not jump cord, the jump event in the character and call a jump. Okay, so I'm hitting space and nothing is happening. Hit shift, nothing is happening. But I hit both. There you go. So that's pretty straightforward. Now what about combo? Uh, I'll change this from corded action to combo. So what combo does is it blocks off the default key and instead you select two or more actions to be pressed in sequence. So you can basically make it in any order of any action, except itself, don't do that. So in order to jump, I will, I'll just do jump chord twice. And jump chord is set to shift. So we've got two jump chords. No, I'm just gonna rename it to shift. So we've got two shifts, and shift is bound to shift. So yeah, that's uh, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to create a bunch of them. So let's go shift, alt, Uh, and I don't know, T. We'll just set all those up as they are named. Alt is Alt. And T will be T. And in order to jump, I'm going to have to do a crazy combo. Shift, Alt, T. Shift, Alt, T. <laughs> so there you go. Shift, Alt, T. And then we have hold. Trigger fires once input has remained actuated for hold time. So we're back to space. Holding down space now. And it jumps. Now, jumps. So that's about half a second. You can hear it. That works as it should. Hold and release trigger fires when input is released after having been actuated for at least hold time threshold. So only once it's released. It should be mostly the same though. So as long as I hold it, nothing happens, but when I release, it should be jumping. And it's not. Yeah, this one doesn't work. Yeah, I really believe it's zero. Now the issue was 
hold time and actuation threshold both have to be to be safe i would just set them to the same thing because i'm not entirely sure how they interact with each other but that's good i can see that being useful so there you go cool next So down is the default. If you uh, delete it, if you have no triggers, down is the default. That's what it's using when it's empty. So I'm not going to go over that. Pulse is interesting, though. So trigger on start, sure. Interval. Uh, so every one second it will jump. Let's do two. Trigger limit. I don't want a trigger limit. Actuation threshold, uh, irrelevant, hopefully. St again, straightforward. Every two seconds, it's, it's, it's a triggering, so there you go. So tap, you have to release it within a certain time frame. Let's do half a second. Actuation threshold will be the same. We'll see. Oh yeah, see that? So if I hold it for half a second, which is based on the tap, release time threshold. Now it should stop at 1. Okay. So this one I like. So it must be released within a second, in my case, for it to fire. Okay, that is all of them. So again, pressed and released seem to be redundant or, or not even functioning. Pressed and released are redundant. Go with hold and hold and released. Uh, that being said, corded action combo, hold, hold and release. Pulse, tap, all work. You don't need to worry about pressed, released, or down. Because down is default. Down is nothing. Alright, well. I think that pretty much covers it. Now, if I'm wrong on pressed and released, definitely let me know. What seems to be happening now is a lot of these become viewer-suggested, which is an enormous help. So keep dropping the comments. And thank you. I will see you next time.